Let us look at another example of time value of money where we will look at an example to find out the present value of a single cash flow. So the example at hand is what would be the present value if rupees 50,000 were received after 20 years at 9% interest per annum. So let's try to understand this using a time scale. So let's say this is the time scale. The tenure is 20 years, so 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, 19, and then 20. The rate of interest is 9% per annum, and that is constant for each year. Present value is not known, and we are receiving 50,000 rupees at the end of 20 years. So basically, we have to find an amount which when invested today at 9% interest per annum will allow a withdrawal of rupees 50,000 at the end of 20 years. So let us look at different methods of solving this example. So the first method we look at is how to solve this using the formula for compound interest. Now compound interest is typically something where you are trying to find the future value when you have a present value. However, when you are trying to find the present value and the future value is known, the concept is known as discounting instead of compounding. So discounting instead of compounding. And discounting is nothing but the reverse of compounding. Now the formula for compound interest is A is equal to P into bracket 1 plus R by 100 to the power N. A is the amount received at the end of the tenure. P is the principal amount which is invested at the beginning of the tenure. R is the rate of interest per compounding period and n is the number of compounding periods. Now this can also be written as future value is equal to present value into 1 plus i, i is equal to r by 100 to the power n. However, here we are trying to find the present value. So let's bring present value on one side. So present value is equal to future value and when this portion goes here, it comes in the denominator divide by 1 plus i to the power n. Now let's plug in these values. So present value is equal to 50,000 divided by 1 plus i and i is r by 100. So 9 divided by 100 which becomes 0 0.09 to the power n and n is 20. So, so 50,000 divided by 1.09 raised to the power of 20. So let me pull my calculator here. So 1.09 and then to the power of 20. So x to the power of y. 20 and this is in the denominator so we'll do 1 by x multiplied by 50,000 so this is equal to 89 to 1.54 rupees so basically if you invest 8,921 rupees and 54 paise today in a bank which gives you 9% interest per annum and you keep it there for 20 years 
at the end of 20 years you will get an amount of 50,000 rupees. Now let's look at another method of solving this. So the second method is to use the present value factor of a lump sum. So let's understand this concept. So the formula that we used in the first method is present value is equal to future value divided by 1 plus i to the power n. Now if we can rewrite this formula as fv into 1 divided by 1 plus i to the power n, then we can take this portion and create a table with the values of this portion for different combinations of i and n. Now this portion can also be called as the present value when the future value is equal to 1 rupee. It can be rupee or dollar or anything. So this portion is known as the present value factor or PVF in short. And then once we have the value of PVF, that is we have the present value of 1 rupee at i and n, then we can multiply the PVF with the future value and we can get the present value that we need. So, some standards have been established for the PVF values in the form of tables. So let's look at one such table. So this is the present value factor chart of a lump sum of rupee 1. So you can see the percents here which is nothing but the value of i. And you can see the periods here, which is nothing but the value of n. So in our case, i is 9 and n is 20. So this is 20. So we have to look at the value at the intersection of these two numbers, which is this one here. So basically what this means is that if the future value is rupee 1, which you are getting after 20 years at 9% interest per annum, then basically you have invested an amount of 0.1784 rupees. Or in other words, 0.1784 rupees if invested today at 9% interest per annum will allow a withdrawal of rupee 1 at the end of 20 years. So basically the present value factor for our example is 0.1784. Now let's use this to find the present value in our example. So basically this formula is future value into PVF and this present value factor is nothing but 0 0.1784 and to this we have to multiply the future value which is 50,000. So let me pull my calculator. 50,000 multiplied by 0.17 84. So the answer we got is 8920 rupees. Now in the first method we got the present value as 8921.54 rupees. So here we got 8920. So pretty close. Basically the difference is there because of the rounding of the decimal points. But pretty close. So this is the second method where you can use the present value factor of a lump sum table 
to find the present value of any future value when you know the values of i and n. Now let us look at another method which is method 3 where we'll see how to find the present value using a financial calculator. Now typically in a financial calculator there are five keys which are useful to find solution to the time value of money problems. The first one is N which represents the number of periods. The next is I which represents the interest rate per period. Next is PV which is the present value. Next is PMT which is basically payment. This key is used only if the cash flow involves a series of equal or constant payments, for example, annuities. And if there is no periodic payment, then we can put PMT as zero. And next, which is the fifth key is FV, which is the future value. Now let's note down the values that we know for this example. So we know that N is 20 years. I is 9%. Present value is to be found out. Payment is zero because this is not an example where we have annuities involved. And future value is 50,000 rupees. And this is positive because we are getting the amount at the end of the tenure. So let me pull the calculator. So this is the financial calculator. Now the way we have to use the financial calculator is that first we need to enter the value and then let the financial calculator know what that value represents. So first we'll enter N as 20. So we'll enter the value first 20 and then press N to let the financial calculator know that the value of N is 20. Now the value of I or the interest rate is 9%. Now in the first method when we use the formula for compound interest, there we divided this 9% by 100 and in the formula entered the value as 0 0.09. However, in case of financial calculator, we can enter the value of I as 9%. So 9 and this value is for I. Next we have present value which we have to find. So the value that we have to find, we will press that button at the end. Now payment is zero. So zero and then press payment. Future value is 50,000. So 50,000 and this is future value. And now we have to find the present value. So we'll simply press the PV button and we get the value as 8921.5. So the present value is minus 8921.5. Basically the negative sign is showing that we have to withdraw this money from our bank or our pocket and then invest it. So that is the negative sign. So it's an outflow from our pocket rupees. So in the first method we had arrived at a value of 8921.54. In the second method we got the value as 8920 and in the third method we got 8921.5. So pretty close all the values. So these are the three methods that you can use to find the present value of a single cash flow.